to Whiskey and Cigars, the fourth episode. Um, it's just me today, and uh, it's going to be more of a relaxed work. Um, you know, as you can see, we got a different table. We've been moving stuff around here at the ranch. Um, today, I'm going to be drinking some Jim Bean uh, Budweiser Copper Lager and uh, smoking a very old cigar, uh, a La Familia. Uh, red label it's very old it's been sitting in a friend's vehicle for over a year so this is things dry as hell so far i already poked some holes well at least tried without cracking all it's just a bad scar but i got nothing else stores have been all closed and stuff like that but let's light this sucker up Today's topic, we're going to be talking about cigar myths. Alright, so, myth number one, I got my notes right here. Uh, myth number one is that Cuban cigars are the best. Now, there are a lot of great Cuban cigars out there, and but the snobbery is that Cuban cigars are the best. Um, maybe before the Communist Party took over Cuba, they were. But not anymore because, well, you gotta look. When Fidel Castro took over Cuba, he, you know, he made everything communism. So there was, uh, there was no competition. So he made it all under one roof and he pretty much destroyed the, the cigar industry in Cuba because all the families that were great in Cuba, they all left. They all went to Nicaragua, and they started making cigars there. So, you can get a lot of Cuban cigars families that you can get in, you know, Nicaragua, Honduras, or any of that, any of those places because they moved there once Fidel Castro took over, and they didn't want to be under a communist regime. So that's one of the big uh, uh, myths: is that the Cuban cigars are the great. Now there are many great cigars that come from Nicaragua, even from America. I know the Americans, like with the Kentucky Fire Cured and all those, those are in the Southern Draw. They're, they're, they're good cigars. They're ranked 90 on the Cigar Aficionado, which I don't really, I'm not a big fan of Cigar Aficionado. I kind of, they're kind of snobs, but yeah. The second myth is the cheaper the cigar equals the worst. All right, that's not always the case. I'm so an average cigar is eight to ten bucks for one cigarette. Uh, and people always say, "Well, I got this sixty dollar cigar. I got this thirty dollar cigar," you know, and it's it's great and all that. But there's many cigars. Like uh, I got notes right here. AJ Fernandez. They make great. They're great company. They make six dollar cigars. So, the Alex Bradley and his Black Market, those are eight, eight, six to eight, even eight to ten. Those are fantastic sticks. I've smoked a lot. I've smoked a lot of cigars in my life. Um, the other fact is that, um, yeah, the cigars, you know, there's great sticks that cost a ton of money. And, uh, the sticks aren't going to be, you know, that, they're probably great, but they're not. I'm sorry, somebody just looked in my window. <laughs> my family. Um, but, I <laughs> got distracted. But, <sighs> we're always going. To... This is more of a relaxed one today, as you can see. I got my real tree hat on, I got my... <laughs> I'm sorry, I got my Smith & Wesson, but... Yeah, going back to the fact that... A cheaper cigar equals a worse cigar. No, not well. If you're getting a cigar from a gas station, like a, a <laughs> what? What are those called? A black? Uh, no. Backwoods. Yeah, those are crappy cigars. Those are pretty much just cigarettes. But uh, yeah, there's many cigars that are around the six six dollar range. They're 
ranked 90 or in the 80s too, upper 80s, lower 90s on the cigar aficionado. Um, myth, myth, I can't speak today. Myth three, the lighter the color, the less strength it is. Now, this isn't a Connecticut wrapper. A Connecticut wrapper is a light wrapper that you see all the time. Um, this is what a Maduro is. Uh, this cigar is in the medium body range. Now, it doesn't, and most of the case, not, probably 85, 90% of the cases, the lighter, the lighter color of the wrapper, it's the less strength. But there's many, many cigars out there that are lighter colors and they, they're very heavy. Um, I had notes on them. I, I don't know what happened to it. I can't read my handwriting, but there's just, just look up of cigars that you can see that are, you know, different colors and all that. Um, myth four. You don't need a humidor to keep your cigars. Yes and no, but if you're going to keep cigars lasting longer, you want to keep a... I Like, just yesterday, I ordered a box of um, uh, my father uh, Connecticut's. It's my favorite cigars. Um, I ordered this box of ten. It cost me $50 on Cigar Page. This isn't a sponsored video, but Cigar Page. Um, but... I'm going to keep those in the humidor because I'm going to have them, you know, all set. But, um, all set. I don't know what I'm talking about. But, uh, I, I, <laughs> um, cigars, you know, I'm going to keep them in the humidor. humidor. I just bought Fabita packs because I want to keep them, last them a long time. And, uh, my brother just came back in the room. Everybody's been distracting me today, I swear. Uh, I'm sorry for the video, guys, but it's just stuff's happening outside right now. I keep getting distracted. But, uh, no, you need humidor if you want to have a cigar for a long time. Now, this cigar was in a buddy's car, glove compartment, for over a year. Well, almost a year. And it's dried to hell. I think it's not even burning. And it doesn't even taste good. I'm just smoking it because I got nothing else to smoke. Um... But you don't need a humidor if you're planning on smoking a cigar the day of or a couple, two weeks after and all that. You don't you don't need it. But if you want to save your cigars, you're going to need a humidor. Number five. That cigarettes are pretty. Cigars are just pretty much cigarettes. That is completely false. The FDA even proved it, and the FDA each is. They're very against cigars and cigar industry. Um, a cigarette is a... Let's do the history on cigars and cigarettes. So, as this, when they started making cigars, the first ever cigar manufacturing in America, he actually... He was making cigars, and he saw the byproduct of these cigars. So what he did is, I could sell these, these this byproduct to people. And he made into cigarettes. He called it cigarettes. If you look at the spelling of cigars and cigarettes, literally cigar is inside cigarette. So the cigarette is the byproduct of the cigar. And over the years, they added chemicals so it can slowly burn and all these. There's over 2,000 chemicals within a cigarette. There's only three. There's only three. Um, what's it called? Uh, ingredients in, in tobacco. Actually, only two. Well, three, technically three, because there's two different types of tobaccos most of the time. And then fruit paste to keep it together. So it's all natural. All right, so if I throw this out in the woods, it will do, it will go back to the land within I don't know how long. But if I throw a cigarette in that plastic, it'll take a couple of years for that to go away. So there's a big difference. Another big difference between it is that you don't inha inhale cigars. There's probably some twisted guy out there who does inhale his cigars. And, I don't know, just, I guess he wants the nicotine, but if you puff the cigar into your mouth, and the cigar is almost dead because it's dried out the butt, but you puff the cigar into your mouth, you don't inhale it. So your mouth is thicker, more thicker than your... Uh, your lungs are so the nicotine doesn't go into everything is making noises today nicotine can't absorb through your mouth as fast as your lungs so 
So I don't have the stats on me, but because this was kind of poorly planned on my part. But yeah, so you can't really get addicted. You can get addicted to anything, but you can't really get addicted to cigars um, because of the nicotine. And there's many studies out there that prove that nicotine is not even that bad. Actually, has a lot of good stuff. Um, stress. It helps with stress and uh, uh, high blood pressure, too. It helps. But um, we're not going to get into that. I just want to make this kind of a short fit. Um, the last and my final myth is that cigars give you cancer. All right. Yeah, they do. Everything gives you cancer nowadays. I have the stats right here because it's the only one I actually looked up. But from the FDA, they did a study in 2012 saying if you smoke a cigar a day, your chances of getting cancer is raised by 0.02 percent. You have the same amount of you have the same you have the same I can't speak. You can you have the same risk of getting cancer from eating a cold cut sub every day than smoking a cigar. You have a higher chance. Anything nowadays can give you cancer. Speaking, having your phone in your, in your front, in your pockets, can give you testicular cancer because of the radiation. Or next to your ear, it can give you anything nowadays can give you cancer. Just live your best life. I smoke cigars because it releases my stress and my anger sometimes. But uh. Yeah, those are the six cigar myths that I've that are you know out there. Um, there's many more, but I don't want to make this damn barn door it just flew open. But uh, I didn't want to make this video a lot uh, longer. Um, you guys have fun out there. Keep smoking, stay safe, and uh, hopefully, with all this quarantine can go over, we can get Jimmy back on, and we'll talk about other topics and all that. Um, yeah, and see ya.